What's up, everybody? It's Richard Sylvain. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Somebody push the mace. Welcome back button. Somebody push that button for me. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, so um, a lot's been happening. You know, life, life's life been life in me. <laughs> you know, the, the, the up is up. But the downs were very down. Um, I uh, haven't gained an angel. I lost my grandmother. Um, she was my everything. She raised me um, so much. Um, this year, she would have been 90. Her birthday is April 21st. Uh, she passed away at 89. Um it was very devastating to me because um, I've never lost anybody so close. And the impact she's had on my life is like unimaginable. Like I can't compare it to nobody. Like, um, like majority of people in society today grew up with siblings, grew up with, you know, a house full of family members. I grew up an only child who moved a lot. And it wasn't until I did a lot of reflecting, I realized I I have no memory in my brain of a mother and a father, my mom and my dad doing some type of activity with me. Like I like those years, like I grew up with my mom and my dad till like I was like three or four. But then my dad passed away. Then I lived in Haiti. Then I lived in Brooklyn. And then when my mom remarried my when my mom remarried and met my stepfather, um, I was about eight or nine, you know, go, um, fifth grade going on six. And um, that was the first time I actually was living with her, you know. But prior to that, she was just a voice on the phone. So like a human connection, like parenting, that was all my grandmother in Brooklyn, New York, you know, and then my grandparents in Haiti. So, like, many people are shaped by these lessons and, you know, everything you learn, like your mom and your dad is saying, hey, don't do this, don't do that, you know, like, I have none of that. So, one day, or recently, maybe, like, about a couple of weeks ago, I was just reflecting on who I am, why I am the way I am, where I am in life and where I'm going and my goals. And I just could not help but be grateful for this loving woman who just poured her love into me no matter what, like, you know, and to realize I am who I am mainly because of her more than my own mother, more than my own father. I'm not bashing them. I'm just stating facts you know, it it shows me like like I respond to situations because of the tools I was equipped with, you know. And you know, those pivotal years of a child's growth are important, you know, and I'm beyond blessed that in a way it was her, like the things that she taught me, you know. But enough on that, because I can talk about my grandmother forever. Um, today's episode is about, <laughs> I just wanted to I, I, give give everybody a different perspective on um, the Will Smith, Chris Rock, Jada Pinkett Smith uh, situation. Mainly focusing on uh, Chris Rock and Will Smith. Um, because... Um, neglect, negating the fact that some people think it's fake, some people think it was real. Like, let's just bloop, like, take that out this equation, right? I, I looked at it after just, you know, hearing about it over and over and over and over and hearing the responses. Um, I kept seeing it through the lenses that of the world needed to see when black men get triggered. That's really going to be the name of this title, uh, this episode, when black men get triggered. Because literally, whether you are a, a hood 
outside, you know, uh, nigga, I'll curse, you know, because I'm black. I could say nigga, you know, but, um, you know, there's like a line, you know, you're either a little more civilized, structured, or you're more street. Not saying you can't be both, you know, you probably have a good balance of each, you know, street smarts and book smarts and stuff, but people tend to be a little black people are either more structured civilized or ghetto street you know and one thing that happens with coming up uh, you know one thing that comes with coming up in both of those cultures or both of those mentalities you respond to situations differently you know So growing up, I can say when black men get triggered, those are usually the two responses. You're either going to respond civilized or you're going to respond out of anger or you're going to respond with violence. I should say civilized or with violence, you know, and you're either going to take the high road when you get triggered or you're going to go low when you get triggered. And it's not even just a black man thing. That's probably just human nature everywhere across the board but um the fact i feel like there was a pro and a con to will and then there's a pro and a con with chris because like i said i I feel like the world needed to see uh, one black man was triggered he responded with violence another black man was triggered but he responded with professionalism, the high road, whatever you want to call it. Somebody might call him a bitch, a pussy. You know, if you're more street, you're going to look at it like that. But if you're more civil, you might go, oh, yeah, he was professional, you know. So uh, let's go. Let's start with Will, right? So Will gets triggered. Somebody who has this track record of being this almost token golden boy black guy like he can't do no wrong everybody loves him you know how does everybody hates chris everybody loves will right everybody loves will but why i also feel like the world needed to see this is because like i said whether this is real or fake the world needed to see that even good people have anger in them you know or can get triggered but for him to be, I think, what, he's in, like, his 50s? He's not, he's not He's not a young buck no more. But even when you push our buttons, I guess I guess what I'm trying to say is even if when you push a good guy's buttons, one day he will choose violence. I hope you know that. One day the good guy will choose violence, depending on the trigger. He will choose violence, no pun intended. Will chose violence. He willed himself up them steps. He did his little catwalk. He did his little slap. You know, there was a little zoom in where they showed that the angle of his arm was a little feminine. So it was a it was a a, a female slap. They said it was a bitch slap. <laughs> you know, people dissect everything, and um, that's that was the to me the beauty of every not beauty of it all, but the angle that. I needed the world to see (laughs) as if I'm directing some show like because the good guy does get triggered and the good guy does respond with anger. Not saying let's say the world could have been on the news a million times before this. Who knows? You know, but if you're going to get triggered on a public stage as a good guy defending your wife to me gets kudos i will defend my wife if my wife feels insulted i will defend my wife period i don't care if you're a little guy or big guy to defend my wife i would defend my wife so i totally get it you know i i I commend that that aspect you know the not the scenario but you know defending your wife um so that's why I'm happy this this kind of came out because it it also lets the good guys know like, yo, there's a time and place to, you know, say, okay, you push my button. Let me show you what choosing violence looks like, you know, now 
like I said, Will is a more civil guy, you know, more street guy, a, a street good guy, because there's civil good guys and then there's street good guys, you know. But a, a street good guy won't give you a bitch slap. He might he might two piece you and you know knock you out or something. But the world needed to see this happen when black men get triggered. Two responses of black men, mainly I'm just putting a the lens on black men per se, you know, but this is a culture thing. You know, anybody who grew up in hip hop, you know who Chris Rock is. You grew up in the culture. You know who Will Smith and Chris Rock are. Like, you know these guys. We grew up on these guys. We know them, you know. Like, and this went down. This is how things played out. And I'm going to keep saying it throughout the whole episode. The world needed to see when black men get triggered. Because that is a literal, that was literally a microcosm of the culture. Like, on many levels. Anybody who grew up in the culture... You get triggered, oh, to it, well, how are you responding to this? How are you responding? Right? Because now if you, get, if you get triggered and you're in a majority of the people around you are more street and you, 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 you choose the professional route, oh, he pussy, oh, he weak, oh, he this, oh, he that. Right? Because now there's pressure, there's all these different elements like that can factor into that when you get triggered what causes that what what response will you choose when you get triggered what did you choose to do did you choose to go the high route or did you go the low route so sometimes if you're in the street environment you kind of got to show out for your <laughs> you know your people get, get try to go for a world star moment you know, but depending on what, who's around you, what's going on, what the environment is, it's better to go the high route. Keep you cool. You're better than that. You're bigger than this. Some people have to choose the high route because they have a lot to lose. You ever heard the expression, um, nobody's more dangerous than somebody with nothing to lose? You know, and if you think about it, Will has accomplished so much shit in his life. I'm not going to say he has nothing to lose. But if if that whole red table situation can happen and you survive that <laughs> and you didn't like, uh, you know, disappear off the face of the map, <laughs> you know, and then the guy is making songs called Entanglement. August Alcina had a song called Entanglement. You know, I'm not going to say Will doesn't have nothing to lose. Like, he, he has kids. You know, he has kids with Jada, and he has a whole other son with another lady. Like, he's accomplished a lot in life. He even wrote book. He wrote, I don't know if that was his first book or not, but the guy has a book out. He has a successful career. You know, like, if he was, you know, knock on wood, but if he was to pass away tomorrow, that's, this guy's, this man's a legend. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm not going to say he has nothing to lose, but he's definitely lived an amazing life. Okay? So, boom. Now, let's talk about Chris. Chris is just doing what the host's supposed to do. Entertain the guests, entertain the crowd, crack jokes, make everybody enjoy themselves, have an amazing day you know talk about whatever the next you know nominee is or whatever you know he says a joke that he doesn't know he doesn't know the, the magnitude or the impact of the joke because you know you see Jada's reaction where she's kind of laughing but then she makes a little a little you know some faces and the camera you know, I wish there was more footage because I need more footage. <laughs> there has to be more footage. Um, but then you just see Will walking up. And I wonder what's go. you know, in the heat of the moment, Chris Rock is, I don't think he's thinking he's going to get smacked. Maybe he thinks Will is coming up to like whisper in his ear because he looks, because like I try to like analyze like I'm saying, like I said, like I don't know if this was fake or real, but I just feel like the world needed to see black men get triggered. But 
his stance, at first I thought he was really like bracing himself. But sometimes you could stand like that because you're waiting for somebody to tell you something. Like that could be the, oh, he's about to whisper in my ear, you know, stance. Like, oh, hand behind my back. Let me lean forward a little bit because he's about to like, you know, something. Boom, he gets smacked. Whap. Holy shit, I just got slapped on national television in front of a billion, in front of the world. This is a global stage because, you know, you know, the culture, when anything, anything the culture is involved is global. We're not, we're not, we're not in a state. <laughs> we're not just the U.S. You know, we, we called the culture runs the world. I'm proud to be black. So sidebar. OK, let me go back. Yeah. So boom. He gets smacked and. He doesn't, he got triggered, boom, so uh, let, let's, let's, let's change the word. He gets triggered. Now, like Will Smith, I, I'm not going to say Chris Rock is a bad guy. Like, I, don't, I don't know his, his, his track record of doing, you know, or being in the public light for negativity or doing the wrong things, you know. But I don't associate chris rock with the streets like that you know we we all watched everybody hates chris we seen what type of character chris was you know so you know he wasn't about to <laughs> tackle will from the back and put him in the lock and start you know mounting him and punching him in the face you know we, it wasn't about to turn into a ufc moment from chris rock you know but one black man got triggered and he responded, boom. Now, Chris, he gets triggered. His response is professional, high road. The show must go on. I am the host of this show. He didn't even go, security, get this man out of here. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't even diss Will, if I'm correct. He just kind of like was like, Oh my God, Will Smith just smacked me. This is the greatest just moment in history. Like he he made it, he took it and flipped it. You know, he, he tried to keep it positive. He did his best to either whether whether he was hiding that guilt or the pain or the shame or the humility that came with being smacked on a stage and nobody like came after Will, nobody like Nothing happened. Literally nothing happened. It was just like Will Smith got a cup of water and walked right back to his seat. Then he said, I'm thirsty. Let me go up there and okay, let me go back to my seat. Like that's literally what happened. The host kept hosting, right? One black man got triggered and he responded. He went low to some. To others, he was defending his wife. Her response, <laughs> her response the next day or whenever her message, her comments were that came out about she's a black, you know, she didn't need defending. He didn't have to do that. Blah, blah, blah. Um, that's that's another that's that's. I, hmm. You know, <laughs> for me, it's like. I'm not them, so I can't speak on their situation, you know. But if I did something like that for my wife, I would hope the next time she was in the public eye, before she just kind of negated my action for her, I would hope she would, like, defend me a little bit. Like, you know, he really loves me. He really cares about me. And he just, you know, he can be emotional. And, you know, this is what he did. He was overzealous, blah, blah, blah. You know, but I really didn't need him to do, to, to do all of that. Like, I could have went on the stage myself. You know, I don't know. She could, like, but then again, I don't know what happens off cameras, behind closed doors, be, between the two of them, you know, because there's only, we are the consumers of their content. You know, we don't know fully what's, what's what, you know. Um, 
But when black men get triggered, those are like the top two responses. Violence or professionalism. Violence or professionalism. In Will Smith's case, on a on a major platform like that, he chose a a, a low a low backhand slap. You know, in the streets, it could be guns, weapons, knives, shootings, drive-bys, stabbings, robberies, corner store bodega, anything, <laughs> anything can go down. But choosing the high route, the high road. Professional, professionalism. It's like choosing the greater good, even if everybody else doesn't see it as the greater good. You know, because some people will say, oh, that, Chris Rock handled himself just right. And then somebody else will go, nah, not me. I would have, ah, 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 boom, 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 doop, 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 you know. And um, maybe the same thing could have been said for Will, because somebody else could have been like, bruh, <laughs> yes, he cracked the joke, but this girl's been like trashing you, dogging you, red tabling you, Augusting you, <laughs> you know. And um, you didn't even have to get up, bro. Like, why'd you get up? <laughs> you know, somebody could, you know, but. Um, Whenever you guys get a chance, um, what's his name? Uh, Corey Holcomb? Holcomb? He definitely went in on his show. That was pretty funny. Uh, shout outs to Corey. Um, he was not. He's definitely Team Will. If you ever listen to that YouTube interview, he's definitely Team Will. Um, kind of. Or he's anti-Jada. Let me, I'll say he's anti-Jada. Um but when black men get triggered, if you grew up in on hip hop, you grew up in the culture, you're either choosing the Chris Re the Chris Rock way of responding to situations, or you're gonna choose the Will Smith way of you know. And these are both good guys, okay? Imagine somebody who's 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 a bad boy, you know? Because um, I like I like the way Robert Kiyosaki said it. He said in life. There are good guys, bad boys, and wimps, <laughs> right? So I look at Chris Rock as a good guy. I look at Will Smith as a good guy. But imagine two bad boys. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And wow, Will Smith played mov in movies called Bad Boys. But um, <laughs> imagine two bad boys getting triggered. They're not responding like these guys responded. It's like they said, it's going to turn to a hip-hop Swiss Awards, you know, if if this was hip-hop, hip-hop, you know. If and Will Smith had a crew or a posse, Will Smith's crew would have been jumping Chris or Chris Rock's crew would have been jumping Will, you know. But um, when black men get triggered, those are some of the main input, like... The top two, if this was a multiple choice, <laughs> A and B, those are the main two options people are picking. I don't even know what C and D and E are, but those are the top two responses to getting triggered. Violence or professionalism. Oh, man. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's why I was so happy. Like, I, like... I just felt like the world needed to see it through those lenses as well. Like the world needed to see that good guys can get triggered too, you know. And those are the real two responses that good guys, you know, like one day the good, any good person has it in them to get triggered and say, you know what, fuck it, violence. You want to see violence? Here's the violence. You know, and it may not be, it might not, it may not just be a slap. It could be something greater. It could be jail time. It could be, you know, whatever else it could be. But don't think that somebody putting up with your shit won't stop putting up with your shit one day.
and vice versa, on not even vice versa, but on Chris Rock's end, I'm not going to say watch your mouth, you know, because he was just being a host. But, you know, you got to know, you got to know the room sometimes. You got to be able to read the room, you know. Um, so I, I just felt like there were so many lessons, so many takeaways, so many perspectives, so many angles. You know, I'm not even, you know, I'm, I'm keeping it focused on the slap and not even what came about after all the responses, all the feelings, uh, you know, all the takeaways, just when, 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 when somebody gets triggered and how somebody responds, like responded, um, yeah, so, uh, I just wanted to keep this episode quick, (laughs) it feels good to be back, um, you know, I'm gonna try to be consistent with this, not even try, it's just, you know, guys, as a entrepreneur, um, you know, I embrace the lifestyle. So when it's up, it's up. When it's not up, it's not up, you know. And then, you know, I have the death in the family. Her birthday's coming up in a week or two. You know, like life, you know, there are priorities and nothing's, you know, like when you're when you're old and you're on that deathbed, <clears throat> What will matter is love and not um <clears throat> and not material things. You know, what will matter is who's on that bedside by you, who is who is there for you, you know, whose life that you impacted so much that they will be there for you in your time of sickness and need. Not material things, you know. So I am well aware of this. So when when life gets serious Nothing else matters but health, but my loved ones being in their best physical shape, you know. Um, and, you know, I've just been I've just been trying to be there for my mother. I've been trying, trying to be there for my father um, and myself, you know, like, I just, you know, gr- grieving comes in waves, you know. Um, but more and more it just it's just lessons to cherish the people in your lives you know even will smith in some ways he's cherishing the woman in his life you know uh chris rock he was cherishing his career (laughs) over losing it you know um yeah so it's okay i've learned this like it's okay to lose it that's that's you know because my whole thing's about mental health personal development but sometimes it's okay to lose it i'm not saying go to jail i'm saying sometimes it's okay to lose it if it means securing your peace at the end it's okay to lose it it's okay to respect your boundary whatever that boundary is if you got to tell somebody off or if you got to walk on a stage and you know, let the world know, hey, like, the boundary is don't talk about my wife no more, like, because what comes from that, you know, you, it's a good intention, but, like, it's okay to not be the punching bag. It's okay to not be the punching bag, because you have this, like, indoor, indoor, indoor mentality, and Guess what? The more you 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 embody this indoor indoor mentality, you're just telling people, punch, swing, take more hits, punch, swing, jab, haymaker. And you're just like, damn, why I keep getting hit? Because you're showing people that's all you want. But now when you throw some hits yourself, mm, guess what came with that? Ironically, more peace. So that's just a lesson I learned in life. Sometimes thinking, you know, you you shouldn't choose violence. It's okay. Like, choose your moment like Will did. Will chose his moment to choose violence. Like I said, I'm not saying go to jail in no way, shape, or form. I'm not saying commit a crime. That is not what I'm saying. But you're, you're, it could be the equivalent of a slap or a smack, <laughs> What's the difference between a slap and a smack? Um, 
it's okay to choose violence for your peace. Um, I heard this lovely put in a podcast um, where the guest said, like, I would fight somebody just to show you how much I love myself. Like, I will fight someone over X, Y, Z because that's how much I respect myself. Like, what do you have that's worth fighting for? You know, because now it's one of those stand for something or fall for anything. Like, if you're not standing up for nothing, life is going to be a shit show for you. A shit show. So you got to have something you stand for. And it's and I'm just saying I've learned if all you're doing is enduring, you're probably not happy with life. But the day you you choose a little violence, you sprinkle a little violence in that coffee, what? <laughs> you're going to be a new man, a new woman. <laughs> Cuz it's going to send that message to whomever not to fuck with you like like that. It's like standing up to the bully, you know. Choose violence, you know. Um it's an exp- in, as in terms of the expression, not I'm not saying go to jail. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm so happy to be back. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please watch the previous episodes. Listen to the previous episodes. Um, because when you know when our mind is right, we could attack the world and conquer. Um, I have this saying where I always say conquer the day, conquer the week, because we are kings and queens. And what do kings and queens do? We conquer. We conquer. We we, we rule, you know. And, you know, it could be your, your career, your job, your business, you know, your passions, your hobbies. But conquer that motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Go all in. And, um... Yeah, sidebar. I just I have this little theory that ever since the Kanye West Drink Champs episode when he said, "This is professional rap." And he made that little professional rap speech. Everybody in the culture elevated because we we knew what that meant. If it's a language that you can only understand if you grew up in the culture. But if you didn't grow up in the culture, you are the consumer. You just got to consume what's coming. But when he did that, it ignited a wave, a new energy. He put out a new energy in all entertainers, comedians, actors, artists, and all entertainers. Anybody with a camera in front of them. So I believe that part of me strongly feels like this Will Smith incident is a response to the Kanye West interview. And it's a weird it's a weird way to connect the dots, but Kanye ignited something into the culture. And it's a language, it's an energy thing. And if you're not of the culture, if you're not of the energy, you are a consumer and you just got to watch the show. But if you're not a consumer and you come from the culture and you understand what I'm saying, you just got to watch that episode again if you have to. When he says, this is professional rap. I'm talking to my professional rap. You know, when he get just that part, just fast forward or whatever minute that is. He put something out there when he explained I'm not the leader, but I'm a leader. And he used that platform to say so many gems that it went over my head that I watched that episode like six times. And each time I learned something new. Each time principles were in reinforced. So I I have this like, <laughs> call it a little Nova theory, Richard theory. But that episode triggered something in the culture. And I feel like we're only about to see 
more black actors, musicians, entertainers take over media like you've never seen before. And I'm saying Kanye West triggered something. Similar to when um, Kendrick Lamar was on that Big Sean song and uh, Control, you guys remember Control by Kendrick Lam- by uh, Big Sean featuring Kendrick Lamar and was it Jay Electronica? I forgot who the third person was, but there's a third person. I, th- I want to say it was Jay Electronica, but when when Kendrick dropped Control, his verse was so massive it shook up hip hop again because hip hop hadn't been shooken up in a while. I feel like the Kanye interview shook up media for entertainers of the culture. And then everybody's game is, 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 is about to elevate even more in terms of media takeover. So you got to be of the culture and of the energy to understand what's happening. But if you're not of the culture and you didn't watch that interview, you may not, you like, you, you may, it's not, you may not understand. You just got to consume what's to come, what's coming. All right, guys, I am out. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, make sure you leave me comments because, you know, the Grow This Brand, we are global. Um, so shout outs to the international team. Um, you know, sometimes people need to see feedback before they chime in. You know, before you buy a product, you check the reviews. So, you know, help me out, please. Just leave some comments, whether you're on iHeartRadio whether you're hearing this from Apple Podcasts, whether you're hearing this from Google Podcasts, whether you're hearing this on Spotify, um, this 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 show is on like 12, 16 platforms. Whatever platform you're on that I didn't mention and you're hearing my voice, I would love to hear from you. I would love for you to follow the page. Follow us on Instagram at PHO, Powerhouse Outlet, um follow me at nova stop playing um follow my business page uh, salons media follow my personal page push through prevail follow my affirmations page nova formations um follow my events page wine and pose <laughs> um i'm a busy guy guys but just know everything i'm doing is to at least Drop some gems in you that can help you win at life. You know, I'm just trying to throw some nuggets your way that might help you and benefit you in some way, shape, or form. So, again, thank you for listening. I should have, I know this was supposed to end like 10 minutes ago or five minutes ago, but I appreciate you for listening. Peace. Conquer the day.